In calculus, limits are a foundational concept that plays a crucial role in defining two other major topics, derivatives and integrals. For many students, limits can initially seem confusing, but they provide powerful insight into the behavior of functions. First, let's look at this important problem that will lead us into the study of limits. Looking at this problem will help us clarify what limits are and what they can reveal about the nature of functions. One of the first real applications of limits is solving the tangent line problem. A tangent line is a line that touches a curve at exactly one point and is parallel to the curve at that point. Let's say we're asked to find the equation of tangent line to the graph of function at A. From basic algebra, we know that to determine the equation of a line, we need a point and a slope. Since the tangent line touches the function at A, we know that the line passes through this point, however, we still need to calculate the slope of the tangent line. The slope of a tangent line can represent the instantaneous rate of change, which could be something like velocity in physical context. While we may not be able to determine the exact slope initially, we could estimate it using a method involving a secant line. A secant line is a line that intersects a curve at two points. Suppose we pick another point close to A say b, and connect the two points with a secant line. From algebra, we know that the slope of secant line is yb minus ya divided by xb minus xa. Now, you can see that as we move the second point closer to a, the slope of the secant line will become a better and better estimate of the slope of the tangent line. As the distance between the two points approaches zero, the secant line converges to the tangent line. We can see as we approach a, Closer and closer, the slope of the secant line connecting A and B should be getting closer and closer to the slope of the tangent line. This process of calculating the slope by taking closer and closer points is an example of taking a limit. In fact, if we call the x distance between the two points h, then if we take the limit as h approaches 0, we obtain the slope at that point. This example represents the derivative of function at point A. Mathematically, a limit describes the value of function approaches as the input approaches a specific point. For example, to express that the function f of x approaches a value l as x approaches a, we use the following notation. This notation tells us that as x gets closer and closer to a, the function f of x gets closer and closer to l. It's important to note that the limit is not concerned with the actual value of the function at that point, only with the values near it. This idea is central to understanding how we define instantaneous rate of change and slopes in calculus. Now, let's look at how we compute the limits in a more efficient manner. The limits can be computed with the help of some rules and properties predefined. Here is a set of rules that we will refer to as we compute the limits. Let's look at this example and try to find the limit of the following function. Using properties number 1 and 3, we can see that the limit can be easily found by substituting x equals 2 into the function. This is simple and can be verified by plotting the function. Now, what if we have the following function? You can see that the result if we follow the same logic would be 0 over 0. This just means that the function is indeterminate at x equals 2. This means that we really don't know what the limit will be until we do some more work. So, how do we find the limit? The first thing that we should always do when evaluating limits is to simplify the function as much as possible. In this case, this means factoring our function and simplifying it as much as possible. Doing this results into the following. Once you simplify and cancel out all possible terms, you can simply substitute x equals 2 into your function to obtain the limit. In this case, the limit of the function as x approaches 2 is 1 over 4 even though the function is undefined at that exact point. Now that we know how to compute the limits, let's look at some important concepts regarding limits. A key concept 
related delimit is continued. A function is continuous at a point if the limit of the function at that point exists and is equal to the function's value. In simple terms, this means that there is no jumps, holes, or breaks in the function at that point. Not all functions are continuous. In some cases, functions may approach different values from the left and the right. This is known as a discontinuous function, and it requires us to evaluate limits from both sides. These are called one-sided limits. For example, looking at this function, at x equals 1, we would need to evaluate both the left-hand limit and the right-hand limit to check for continuity. If both values match, then the function is continuous and the limit exists. Limits are steeping stone to deeper insight into calculus. So, next time you see a curve, think about what it's telling you as you get closer and closer to a point. This is it regarding limits. Thanks for watching. Do not forget to check other videos and to like and subscribe for other similar videos and tutorials.